Microsoft Windows Defender is the key defense of the Windows 10 and its newest versions. Windows Defender has a good feature called MC Anti Malware Scanning Interface, which is integrated to the key components of Windows. So, whenever we run JavaScript, PowerShell, or Visual Basic Script, it identifies the thread inside. It also started being integrated to .NET 4.8. That means 4.8 also has an MC on shoulder of it to scan everything clean or not. Therefore, thread actors as well as red team engineers discovered several different bypass issues in MC interface because they needed to get the code run. In our test bed, we have Windows Defender enabled and up to date, which means updated just now, as well as it is scanning our binaries in real time. It gets some support from Cloud for the signatures. And also, if it identifies anything malicious, it automatically sample it out and send this to the Cloud service back. So automatic, uh, automatic sample subscription uh, of this uh, Windows Defender helps it to identify the future threats. Currently, it may be not a threat, but after some further analysis by um, some engineers or the automatic cloud services, it may be identified in future and cloud delivered protection is that one actually, getting those signatures and avoiding this sample in future. So whenever we currently get identified with our sample or file or script, it will be known by the cloud services. The red team engineers discovered MC bypass, as I mentioned before. For example, this one is Dominic Charles MDSEC blog, and it is regarding um, PowerShell MC and its uh, logging. So it, this, it describes how we can evade this, how we can bypass this. Matt Graber also points out that MC utils, and if we can um, avoid this while loading, if it fails, or if we trick it saying that it failed, the MC scan won't start in real time. That means we will be okay. Or we can use some other components which are not managed well. In time, of course, these type of attempts identified by Windows Defender. And Windows Defender identified them as malicious threats and it avoids it. So whenever we run something like that, which is coming from Dominic Charles' blog, it is always blocked by Windows Defender saying that this is a malicious content. So we need something else. MC scan buffer bypass is yet another thing. Simply, MC scan buffer is a function and it actually can be patched in real time. CyberArk has pointed out that in their research here, this function can be patched and called in real time and this will help attackers to bypass MC. And also, Daniel Dagen has developed a sample in C-sharp. This block of CyberArk is available here. And they also point out this screenshot and explains the function. So this sample here is developed by Daniel Dagen and simply introduces an MC scan buffer bypass. It also has Another improvement here coming from Adam Chester and uh, his tweet. Simply, he tuned this up for x86 environment, not only for x64. The problem there is, first, this is an old, um, old patch coming from 9th of September 2019, almost a year before, and Windows Defender has a patch for it. It detects it. But the detection points are simply, first, the Adam Chester's block number, MC, any MC word is blocked, 
This also triggers MCDLL as well as MC scan buffer. When I removed all those, I was hoping to make it work. It didn't work. After some debug, I found that Marshall copy was another point. Because whenever we try, we should protect. And after that, Marshall copy for this patch, it fails. So I try to explain how it works. As we see, this is the patch for X80, X64 environment. Uh, what we try to do is patching the length of it. If the length is zero, the scan buffer will be zero and MC will scan nothing. To patch this, we simply prepare this value and we need something helping us to push this value set, this array, the byte array, which points out each parameters of this function and push it to the required memory space. The memory address is here, so virtual protect is used to make it read, write, and execute. And this address to be used by Marshall to write this patch. It doesn't work because these two things are the signature. So what I did is slightly simple. If Marshall copy is known, I need to use something else. Marshall copy is an internal .NET function. It really helps us to push this data out. The second thing is I need to remove all these important things, which are MC, bypass, scan buffer, and etc. In my new code, I simply replace them with A and B, and that's it. And for MC, I still need to load the MC data. I still need to get the pro, uh, address of this uh, function. That's why I need to use get proc anyway. That, that, that means I need to split this up. That's OK. They are done. But this sample was still triggering MC. I changed this Marshall copy, which is internal function of C sharp, wait, write it. And write it is a different function here. So I tried a couple of examples here. This is my playground. Simply whenever I try to change something, I change here instead of other places. It writes the given bytes, which is the patch, and given address. That is my target memory address. And I used write process memory instead of Marshall copy. First, I got the handle of my current process. I made it a variable for me. And I used write process memory against my own process instead of Marshall copy, which is quite unusual because this is a Windows API. And you need to use platform invoke for it. That's why I needed to add this part, just like we should protect get proc address and load library. It is also a Windows API. That's why it needs to be called using platform invoke or dynamic invoke, which is not mentioned here. Write process memory gets our process handle, which is our current process, gets this memory address, the bytes, length of bytes, and it gives uh, how many bytes written as an integer is here. So we need a pointer for it, and it's, it's there. So we have zero. This is our example, and we need to compile this, and we need to make it running in our target environment which is right here. So what I am trying to do is right here, compiling this. Using Mono, which is uh, available on Kali. And you can install this like this, apt install Mono complete. So it will give you mono framework that can compile C sharp applications. So MCS slash target, which is library, okay, and our attack MC scan buffer. This is source code. So we need an output, which is our DLL, and scan buffer. 
this is how we can compile the source code of C sharp. Now we need to copy this out for our service. Our service is a tax service that I will explain shortly. But simply, we already discussed how we can deploy Patak service and implant as a different video, as a separate video. In that video, we demonstrated this in one single environment, a Windows system. But this time, we have two systems, a Windows as well as a Kali. And Kali Linux has an IP address. which is 172.16.168.134. So what we do is downloading .NET for this Kali and then cloning the Patak C2 repository, as I explained in our uh, previous video, and just giving this command, .NET run. It will run the Patak service. Patak has a good feature for us, which is quite useful in this case, is MC Bypass. Patek service has a tools folder that is served as web um, web page as well. So simply, we need to put our code there, and we can ask that Windows to run that code given. I'm going back here. We have compiled our code. Let's copy this code, this data, compiled by us, to the C2 environment. So we will serve it. Attack C2, attack service, www.root, tools, and PA. PA is Patak AMSYS scan buffer. So it is right here. The file is, as we can see, a .NET file and it is an executable. Patek is also running to serve this file. What we need to do is running this file on the remote system. This is PowerShell, and this given command was malicious, if we remember our demo. This is blocked. So we can use another type of PowerShell that can run our cleanup code, which is this one. Another pause here, and we will jump a brief information set. We can run a C Sharp or a .NET assembly using several different ways on Windows, not only using an executable and hitting enter or double click. We can use several different techniques. I will not share all the details, but simply we had different tools to run this. Install Util is one of those. And Casey Smith has discovered that this can be used to run uh, C sharp code, uh, and this can be used to bypass um, application um, restriction environments. Simply, application restricted environments. Um, it is also the same for RegASM and RegSVCS as well. Casey Smith also discovered that RegASM and RegSVCS can be also used to run uh, .NET code as DLLs. Not registering it, also unregistering it will work. MS Build also had several different bypasses, and these are some of those examples. I'm coming from KCC Meet again. But this one is also useful. This is one of the generic ways used in PowerShell. This is also introduced by Microsoft. Simply, PowerShell can utilize the C-sharp code or .NET assembly. The source code can be used as add type, or the binary can be loaded using assembly load. Then we can use the entry point to call it, or we can use get and type. If we use get type and get method, we will have the method itself and we can create an instance. And there are several other ways, old and new, and they can be used to initiate this binary. I'm going back right here. We had a DLL, and this DLL is representing our MC patch because we compiled. And this DLL is presented in this folder. And this folder is simply this one. Because Patak 
right here is running a web service for us and it serves this binary under tools folder as we copy it. We only need this URL to replace this PowerShell command. But there is another trick here. As you remember, I have changed the code and I used A and B. And I compiled this as DLL. So there is no entry point. So I need to use get method and other details. So I used another command set that I am copying now. Simply it downloads the DLL using web client. It downloads this data as data. So it gives us a byte array. And then we can load this using assembly load. We can find the type called A. We can find the method of this A as B. And we can invoke it. This is what we can do. Nothing happened. But it doesn't matter. Our previous malicious code, if you remember, it was malicious. Let's run it again. As you see, there is no detection because it is now bypassed. So this code has a magic simply running C sharp on PowerShell. And the C sharp code is compiled as DLL and served through a web service. This can be any web service and anywhere. So we can deploy this to GitHub or Instagram or somewhere else. The problem there is, of course, we need to run this code on PowerShell. It is easy on our test bed, but this needs to, uh, this needs to be uh, running on system by the user, by the compromised user. Our scenario was the user will do something, one single thing, to create a chain reaction. So the MC will be only one of those actions. If we go back to our action place, MC is representing this block. So what we expect is user to run this Excel file, run this Patek dropper, and finally running this MC patch using the Patek dropper. Then Patek dropper will move on. Now, our next video will be based on Patak Dropper, how we can design Patak Dropper and make it first running MC, second deploying the Patak implant to give the full control to our command and control service.